All right, guys, welcome back. For this is our second lesson with prehistory. So last week we learned a little bit about um, all the early bones and stuff they found. Now we're going to learn into a little bit to the uh, migrating patterns. Migrating, migration would also be a word they would use. So what we're going to do, we're going to look here. All our I can statements are um, staying the same. We're going to look a bit into the river valley civilizations, how we lead into that especially in the um, second unit. Prehistory is going to fly by. We're here in only the second full week, and we're going to be all the way through. And on Friday, you're going to have your first assessment. That is why it's, it is key that you've kept up with your guided notes and that you finish them out this week. So Ms. Atala is going to lead you through your bell work here where you pause your screen and answer this to yourself. And before I do that, I do want to say, if you last week turned in your guided notes, you're going to have to unsubmit those because we're going to continue those. So if you have turned them in, if you unsubmit them, you will be able to edit them. If you do not unsubmit and you've already turned them in, you won't be able to edit those. So just remember that. So today for our bell work, look at these pictures and you'll be able to see them on your screens better than on here. What skills do the people have? How does that skill contribute to their life? So those skills that are shown in these pictures, how does that benefit their life? So go ahead and pause and we will give you a chance um, to answer that question. All right, welcome back. So for our instruction today, we are going to continue with main idea number three and four uh, and finish out your notes. And then, and before we move on, let's think about, let's answer that question together real quick. So if we're looking at this picture, these pictures here, so they're learning to um, some farming skills, some um, irrigation, um, irrigation skills. skills, yes, where they're able to move water from place to place. So let's think about how that would actually benefit them, Miss Atala. How do you think you're moving water from place to place? How would that help them with crops? Well, let's think. If you're not by an area where your crops can get water, chances are they would probably die and your food source is going to go down. If you can move water to where you need, it probably helps their food source and they're able to have a steadier flow of food. Right, Mr. Simpson? Yes, and also think about um, it's also going to help your animals and then the um, some of our vocabulary words such as domestication. It'll help with all sorts of their living arrangements as we have learned from our vocabulary last week. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to learn um, our main ideas three, four, and then one and two um, of the, the section about migration. So main idea three, Stone Age tools that grew more complex as time passed. Remember, we talked about all four groups, um, Australopithecus all the way through to Homo sapiens. And so as these grew, uh, what can you tell us about these Stone Age tools, Ms. Tala? All right, so the first humans and their ancestors lived during the Stone Age. The first part of the Stone Age was called the Paleolithic Era. That was one of your vocabulary words um, that someone in your class looked up. During the Paleolithic Era, that is when people started using stone tools, hence the name Stone Age. So a tool is just a handheld object that has been modified to help a person accomplish a task. And these are two words you should be typing in on your notes. I want to make check my hair because last time nobody told me it was sticking up in the back. So we should be good there. All right. So next slide. If you want to one. There we go. All right. Our first tool. So now we're talking about tools in particular. The earliest ones were found in Eastern Africa. Again, we don't want to get caught up on the years, but um, they could be as early as 2.6 million years ago. And how did they create these? Well, to create these um, sharp edges, they were um, hitting stones together and creating these sharp edges. And then one unsharpened um, side could be used then as a handle. And we saw a picture of that last week. And we might, we'll might we see a picture here at the end of some, um, some of these tools. And then scientists think these first tools were used mostly to cut and grind food. All right, so the stone tools. So, did you know that the Stone Age people's tools weren't, weren't as primitive as, as we kind of think? They actually were made to be like um, knife blades and arrowheads, just like this one pictured here. Um, and they were made out of a volcanic glass called obsidian. Now, you may be thinking, obsidian? Like, I've never even heard of that. Chances are, 
You don't know what they're used, but we still use them even today. Obsidian blades are extremely sharp. In fact, they're a hundred times sharper and smoother than steel blades that are used in surgeries in modern hospitals. Today, um, there are actually some doctors who use obsidian blades, um, which are what uh, people during the Stone Age used. So they are more precise uh, and they're more delicate. A lot of surgeons say that they leave less of a scar when they do surgeries on um, people's faces. So there's even doctors that are even going back to using these same types of blades that were used that are considered like Stone Age tools. Pretty so. cool. And that would lead us into later tools, such as um, improved tools. They were made out of flint. And when you even think of the word flint, you might think of um, towns that were named like Flint, Michigan, you hear in the news today. People learned how to attach wooden handles. Again, you think of a hammer, ha wooden handles, or you think of um, tools still. We still get, um, you, you attach handles like just today. We still do. Because they no longer had to stand next to the animals they were hunting, people could then kill larger animals from farther away at a distance. Again, they're improving as they go along. And we're not going to do this because we're not in school right now. But All right, so main idea number four. Hunter and gatherer societies developed, uh, they developed language, art, and religion. So early humans formed societies. Societies was also one of your vocabulary words. And it is just a group of people who share common characteristics or a common culture. Uh, they were hunter-gatherers. The most important development of early Stone Age culture was language. This is when we see history actually being documented because there is a written way to document it. And then some more words. Society, these words. Again, you're going to see vocabulary. Over and over, we're going to really, in social studies in particular, you're going to see vocabulary at the beginning, and then we're going to um, really repeat it as we go through, and you're going to need to know it again on the quizzes and assessments. Society, a community of people who shared this common culture. So, when you have a society, they had smaller groups, and they lived in caves together. And they would have hunter-gatherers. So, again, Mr. Tal just uh, went over this. But what, did that, what were hunter-gatherers? Now, this should be a term you're familiar with, and you, even if you've forgotten it. Um, they hunted animals, and they gathered plants and seeds to survive. So, again, hunter gather. And what did they do? They developed their culture. So, language, religion, art. We're going to touch upon this, and we're going to spend later this week um, an entire lesson just on the cave art, which I really enjoy the um, art aspect, and I, I think yes. Mrs. Holler does as well. And so what did this do? It made it allow them to form relationships because if you can communicate, you can form relationships. It makes it easier to hunt and it allowed them to distribute their food within their societies to one another. All right, so this is a picture, kind of a drawing of a hunter-gatherer society. So let's look at some of the skills that are on here. So we have here at the top, we see... Um, these hunter-gatherers are hunting a, a mammoth. Um, we have here, you see this man is drawing um, cave art in their kind of home. Um, they're gathering their, um, their nuts, their berries down here. They have their fire getting started, and they're using their various tools down here. So again, you'll have access to this picture. You can really see up close and personal and um, analyze this picture um, in your notes. And then we're going to end up with a couple, we have two more, um, uh, we have a big idea for the, we're going to start looking at migration and then two main ideas. So our big idea, people now, they are started to form societies and after they formed societies, they started to learn to hunt and get, um, hunt and they started to, um, they started to gather and do all these things. And so what do they start to do? They start to now branch out and start to migrate. And so... They are going to go around the world, and they're going to start to learn and adapt to these different environments. And so what are our two uh, main ideas that are going to support this, Ms. Atala? People moved out of Africa as the Earth's climate changed, and we're also going to look at how people adapted to new environments by making clothes and new types of tools. All right. 
So first, as the Earth's climate changed, they went around in the ice ages. Now, they didn't necessarily want to um, move. If they were happy where they were and they were surviving, they didn't necessarily get up one day and say, well, I'm happy, I, wanna, I want to move. But ice ages, weather, climate, caused them to um, have to move. And so the ice age came along and they had to migrate. And so they went to new places. And so they migrated around the world and then this caused a global migration that took hundreds or even thousands of years to occur. So if you're thinking, if, if you've now added in meat and these animals into your diet and, and you need that type, that food source to survive, but that animal has moved because of climate and stuff, you have to also move just, just as a survival technique. All right, the ice ages. So about 1.6 million years ago, many places around the world began to experience these long periods of freezing weather, what we call the ice ages. So the ice ages uh, ended about 10,000 years ago. Again, do not stress about these dates, okay? Huge sheets of ice covered a lot of um, the Earth's land. So many areas uh, that are now underwater were then dry land. Uh, and that land that is now, well, a land bridge. So a strip of land connecting two continents probably connected Asia and North America. A lot of people, uh, when they think about land bridge, think about the land bridge that used to connect Alaska to Russia, Asia. That's now underwater and it, it no longer exists, but that is, I think, one of the most famous um, land bridges that you may have heard of. And then settling the new land. So early in, early hominids, which we one of our first words we talked about, they migrated from Africa to Asia um, about 2 million years ago. Then they eventually spread out. So once they got there, they started to go out. And we'll see maps next, uh, next week when we start talking about maps, um, getting into our map work. They eventually spread into India, uh, China, Southeast Asia, and Europe. And then they started to migrate to South Asia around 100,000 years ago. And then from South Asia, they again, they migrated out again, started to branch out to Europe, North Asia, and then North America. So you see how quickly things can sort of branch out. And it's um, and, uh, not just people, it's uh, ideas, diseases, um, all, all these things. And then by 9,000 BC, humans lived on all the continents except for Antarctica. Yeah. So. All right, so main idea two, people adapted to new environments by making clothing and new types of tools. So early people had to adapt to these new environments. They learned how to sew animal skins together for clothing, which is probably when you think of cave people, kind of your idea of, of like what they wore. Um, they found new shelters. They started um, using pit houses and caves. They created structures um, made out of animal skins, wood, stone, bones. Um, and they had to create new tools and technology. So new tools really define the Mesolithic era or the Middle Stone Age. They invented things like hooks, fishing spears, and the bow and arrow. New technologies came, such as canoes and potteries. Now, a lot of people, when we taught this last year, were confused because when they think of the word technology, they don't think of canoes and pottery. When we are talking about technologies here, we're not talking about electronics. We're just thinking about new kind of ideas that revolutionized or like vastly improved um, their, their quality of life. And then something to help you remember the three eras. You have Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic. Mm -hmm. So I think of Paleo, Meso, Middle, M, and Neolithic, New. So that's how I keep them straight. Meso, middle, neo, new. So. And then I believe we're getting close to the end here. Big idea. The development of agriculture brought changes to human societies. And then the first farmers learned to grow plants and raise animals. And then farming changed societies in the way people lived. So the first farmers grew plants. And the Stone Age, and this is, again, the Neolithic era, the New Stone Age. And then they started to domesticate animals. And so if you're see, you should be seeing your words pop up and be like, I remember that. That was my word. And then farmers also learn how to um, use these animals. So domestication, of course, is where they take it and they use animals for their own benefit. 
So that is where we see start to see the domestication of animals, using them for their own benefit. All right, so the New Stone Age. So the New Stone Age began as early as 10,000 years ago in Southwest Asia. So people learned how to polish stones, how to make fire, and how to produce food. It ended about 5,000 years ago in Egypt and Southwest Asia when tool makers began using metal. And then again, domestication, I just went over. It's how you change. Now, we think of domestication of mostly for animals, but you can also change plants to, the, to use them however they're the most useful for you, for you, excuse me. And then people learned that they could plant seeds to grow their own crops. They could um, plant the biggest and sweetest crops for the biggest and better yields. And then also um, the plants that led to the development of agriculture or farming. So again, when you hear domestication, I, I primarily think of animals. It's the first thing that comes to mind, but you do not forget about plants because of agriculture and farming. It's a big part of domestication. Yeah, basically they found a food in the wild that they could eat. They, they got the seeds from that plant or that food and they planted it. That was the domestication of plants. And like Mr. Simpson said, that's what led to agriculture and farming and kind of mainstreaming. Instead of, I have to go search for this in the wild, I have seeds and I can plant right here and I know where they are. In my backyard, so to speak. Exactly. All right, so animals. Hunters did not, didn't need to follow wild animals once they learned how to keep and use animals. So sheep and goats were used for milk and food and wool. Um, larger animals were used to help with farming. And then learning to use animals to help with farming increased people's chances of surviving. Because if the animal was doing the majority of the work, then it wasn't as strenuous or as hard on um, the humans. They were able to live longer lives. This is the definition of work smarter, not harder. Very much. And then I believe our last main idea, farming. How did it change the society and the way people live? Well, they definitely, they knew they could survive more if they had a food supply to depend on. The domestication, it made the plants and animals, it led to them, they had things like clothing for once because they could depend on the animal hides. They could depend on the fibers. And then lastly, it made them have permanent settlements. They could stay in one place. Like Ms. Tall said, they didn't have to chase the animals. They didn't have to go and find the food. It was all in one place. So they could stay in one and stay there and have a settlement, eventually have communities and have towns. And so it helped their way of life. It helped their um, longevity of their lives. And you started to see people live longer lives and healthier lives, because, all because of, of these, um, these, the, this farming, as it were. And so what you're going to see, there are going to be several pictures. We're, we're not going to go through each. These are You have about six or seven pictures for you to um, go through and supplement this lecture. We're already at about 20 minutes for you. And you can see that each one goes with what we just went through. And you just sort of look, flip through these and, um, and see how each one ties into what we just went through and, and really um, add to, what, to the, all the terms we've gone through so far and really see how... These two lessons over prehistory are um, really going to build a foundation for everything we we build up and go through for this year. Uh, Ms. Atala, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so just like we were talking about how we saw the people move out, that's what we, after we finish studying prehistory, we start looking at the people who kind of branched out and looking at those societies and how they continue to build and build and build. So, um, like Mr. Simpson said, look through these pictures and... Um, we are going to end our video just because it's almost at 20 minutes um, and we will have some questions for you to fill out and if you have any questions for us uh, you can um, email us, you can call us at the school or you could pass us a note at Walmart. Alright guys, talk to you later.